Hello, and welcome to this directional video from Build and BC on how to cut a perfect circle. My name's Greg, I'm going to talk to you about everything you need to do in order to cut the perfect circle. Now, cutting a circle is actually a very long, complex, and skillful process. And a lot of people, especially the untrained eye, may think that you'd use a jigsaw primarily to cut a circle. It does come into the process of cutting a circle, however, you do not use a jigsaw to cut a perfect circle. The reason being is that a circle, a perfect circle anyway, the edge should be completely smooth all the way around, the whole circumference, with no bumps or humps. And if you were to do it with a jigsaw, you're definitely going to end up with a wavy edge. Now, I'll talk you through the tools that you're going to need for this. Now, first of all, you're going to need a festal or a table saw. Now, if you don't have a table saw, I definitely recommend using a plunge saw. Definitely a festal. Now, festal are absolutely magnificent and lead the market in plunge saws. You get a perfect cut every time. It's portable. Brilliant tool. Cannot talk about it enough. My new favourite toy, I may add. Now, you're also going to need a combi drill and an impact driver. However, if you don't have an impact driver, it's fine. You can just use the bit inside the combi drill as if you were to use an impact driver. However, if you've got both, it makes things a lot quicker and a lot easier. Now, the absolutely essential tool that you're going to need for cutting a circle is a router. You have to have a router to cut that perfect circle. Now, you're going to need a profiler bit, which has got a bottom runner to it, as well as just a standard router cutter. Now, as mentioned before, a jigsaw. It is not essential to the process, however, it does make things easier. I'll explain how it does a little bit later on. Now, when you cut a circle, there is an inordinate amount of waste. You have so much waste that you need to get rid of, and part of that waste is the dust, especially if cutting in MDF. The dust is monstrous, there is so much of it. So, definitely make sure you've got some breathing protection, whether it be a respirator or a gas, well, gas mask, a dust mask. Also, you're going to need some ear defenders because it's going to be very, very loud. I'm sure this video will show justification as to how loud it will be. Anyway, now I'll take you through to the bench and we'll get started on the process of how to cut this circle. Now the first step is to cut your compass cutter. Now if you can imagine putting a pin centrally on a board, then running some string from that pin, with a pencil at the end of the string and moving it around, if you move it all the way around, that is going to form a circle. That is essentially what we're cutting here. But the string is going to be a much sturdier, stronger version. Now, to cut the plate from the compass cutter, you need to have it the same width as the plate as your router. In this occasion, it is 92 millimetres. So we need to cut a strip on this piece of MDF at 92 millimetres wide. Now today we're cutting a circle at 600 millimetres in diameter which means the radius would be 300 millimetres. So we need to make our compass cutter about 400 millimetres long, just to allow for the compass, uh, sorry, for the router, as well as uh, just a little bit extra, just to make sure. So, first of all, we need to make a strip at 92 millimetres. Mark two points at 92 millimetres, which will give you a straight line. Now, as mentioned before, a festal plunge rail is the best tool to use for this. Straight cut every time, very easy to use, and very quick. Now, it creates a lot of dust. So as mentioned, you need to take the proper precautions. Here we go. Now's the time to cut the clearance on the compass cutter for your router. Now, this has been cut at the same width as the router plate, as we can see, smooth on both edges. Line the edge of the router plate up with the end of the compass cutter and draw a line where the compass, uh, sorry, where the plate ends. Now a straight piece of material, draw across, just like so. 
Now the middle of that cross indicates where you need to drill a hole. This will allow your obviously router bit to go through the compass cutter plate. With your combi drill, insert your hole cutter and cut your hole. There we have it. Now the next step is to mount your router to the plate with the hole. Now to do this, usually on every router there are four holes, one in each corner on the plate. This particular router is a Bosch JKF600 and it's my choice every single time. It's a wonderful machine which I've used for years. Now, the open side of the router is to face the outside of the plate. With some 20 millimeter screws and your impact driver, screw it to the plate through the holes. Then your router is mounted, and as you can see, there's clearance through to the bit. Now, as mentioned before, I said you need to cut the compass cutter to the same width as your router plate. The reason for this is because you need the dead set middle of the compass cutter, which will also give you the dead set middle of the router. So now, Half of 92 millimetres is uh, 46 millimetres. I really had to think there actually for a second. I was uh, using my maths. Anyway, you now need to mark 46 millimetres on your plate. And then, the straight edge, mark that 46 millimetres all the way down. then you'll be left with something like this. It's also important to do this on the top side as well. Reasons shall be explained later, but it is important so do make sure you do it. 46, 46. Straight piece of material, lay it down in, with the two points and mark. And again, you have a mark which runs down the middle of the router plate. Now comes the fun time because we're going to insert our bit and proceed to cut the circle. Now we need to mark on the material exactly where it is to place our central point for our compass cutter. Now as I said before we're going to cut a 600 millimeter diameter circle today. So to allow for a little bit of extra just for whatever reason We'll give ourselves 650 millimetres. So mark 650 millimetres with your tape measure. And two points, because two points forms a straight line. With a straight edge, whether it be a piece of material or spirit level, whatever it may be, make your mark. And as a result, you have 650 millimetres. Now to find the centre of any piece of uh, more board or material or area, you use the four corners. You've got one, two, three, four corners. Now you line your straight edge up with the opposite corners, just like that, and just like that. And as a result, you have found your center. Now to start to cut the circle, you need your standard router cutter. No bearings, nothing. Just have to make sure it is sharp. The key to good circles are sharp router bits. So, we insert our router bit. There we go. Nice and tight. We pull it through so it's just through on the centre. Don't know if you can see that. No, it's just emerging from the surface of the bottom of the compass cutter. Now from this, 
we can now make our mark of where our radius is to be. Now, the furthest point that this will be cutting is to the edge of this cutter. So, with a sharp pencil and with a measuring tape, you measure from the edge of that router bit to our radius length, which in this case is going to be 300 millimetres. Which we have now made there. This now gives us our point to screw a screw through into our central point, which will allow us to then move the router around to form our beautiful, lovely, seamless circle. Now's the time to attach our compass cutter plate to the board material. Now, this is always best done with a pilot hole. Now to do this, you need a one millimeter drill bit. I don't know if you can see that, because it's only a millimeter. However, it's quite essential, as it just ensures accuracy when you come to connect the two together. So with your combi drill, attach your drill bit, and with your square, make a very small indent in the center, just to get you started. And with your square, make sure on all angles, you go down straight. That's through. Make a quick mark so we know where it is, although we know where it is. <laughs> the same on here, on this mark which we made for the 300 millimeter radius. As you can see, the hole corresponds on the other side. Now we have our holes drilled. The thickness of both of these materials is 18 millimeters. So obviously 18 millimeters and 18 millimeters is 36 millimeters. I used my maths that time, did quite well. So anyway, to connect the two together, you're only gonna need a 35 millimeter screw, which I have in my hand here. Now just to make things easier for them to line up, with the pilot hole you just made, put the screw into the hole and drill. This makes it easier to line up. Same on the other piece. Okay, now we put this screw through all the way, it is extruding the screw. And then we line it up with this screw hole we just made. And drive her home. And then, we have this device, which allows the router to move around on a circle, to cut the perfect circle. So now we are now ready to cut our circle. As I said before, we have the router bit just a few millimetres over the surface from the bottom. That allows us just to make a dent to begin with as such in the material. Now as I've mentioned many times, this creates a lot of dust. So make sure you use your uh, dust mask and you use your ear defenders because you're about to find out it's very noisy as well. So, here we go. see we have an ever so slight circle formed and now that we've made that little indent it's time to get deeper and deeper with the router until we can get the deepest we can possibly get as said at the beginning of the video a jigsaw does come into it now this is just for ease purposes really because this now we can cut to just outside the um, outside perimeter of the circle just to make it easier for the router to cut the excess away. So, that is what we shall do. We 
which is very bumpy on the outside, which would have happened if you used the jigsaw. However, on the step, you have a perfectly cut circle, which now we use our profile cutter on the router to trim flush all the way around. Now, as you can see in the background, we have where it used to be our circle. Now, with a profile cutter, which has a bottom runner, we attach this into the router. Nice and firm. Now, with the same 35mm screw, put this through the hole into the bench, which enables the circle to turn. Now, set the depth of the profile cutter so it hits the bottom of the very flush circle that you have made underneath. And then we turn the router on and cut to that circle to straighten up these bumpy edges made from the jigsaw. Okay. Again, dust mask and ear defenders. Here we go. Once this is done, it's time to remove your circle. Get your impact driver or your combi drill if you haven't got an impact driver. Take the screw that's holding it to the bench out. And there you have it. Perfect circle. Free of bumps, free of humps. Perfect. For more on what we do at Build and Be Seen, please visit our website, which is www.buildandbeseen.com. You can follow us on Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. And also, please follow our blog, which is Build, Blog, and Be Seen, which can be found on our website. Keep your eye out for future directional videos as they'll be coming your way. And I suppose, thanks for watching. Any questions, just email me and let me know. Thank you.